something a little more harsh than that because oh, I'd be well, harsh that's right. Well, <laughs> I, I can't do anything. I can't do anything more harsh with you because I may need you to wheel me around NSMA next year. So I got to be <laughs> somewhat nice to you in case I get busted up. Or whatever. Yeah, but you like torture porn. That's the issue of Dump Ball Reich. That's why. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't trying to torture you. I was trying to get through a show. Yeah, there there you go. Go. Well, he did. All right. We got business to take care of there. We got to yes. make sure that our boys over at Confidential get out on time. I will tell you right now, there will be no parting shots. So inconsiderate to Confidential. I want to make sure that JB and Jacob have the opportunity to promote what they do rather than not worry about the parting shots this particular week. But that Good. said, finishing Good. out the crew, we got George Icorn. Welcome back, George. Good to be here, guys and lady. <laughs> and not behind the scenes today is Candy Ebling. Welcome back, Candy. Thank you. <laughs> fresh, Thanks, off guys. Of, fresh off of Key West. My goodness, those sunset cruises couldn't be any better when you have a guy like me drinking your champagne and going out there and letting you take pictures. Oh, I pulled a fast one on the missus, but well, we still had a good time when I was drinking some alcohol while this guy's drinking the potent stuff. Yeah. Right, man? <laughs> Look at her. She's quiet. She don't have anything to say. What am I going to say? I'm, I got to watch my back around you. I learned that. <laughs> or my drink. I, I should I watch how drink. you say stuff online. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <He's on there. laughs> All right. Well, our first topic of the night is going to only be towards Candy and JB. And I want them to come along. Larry <laughs> Nasser will be in prison. Will he last another year or two? We all had a field day with it, but Candy, you start off. How long do I think he'll last? He's already lasted too long, in my opinion. But, you know, all the ones like that, you know, eventually <clears throat> come up with their demise. You know, uh, what he did was horrific. And living a life in prison to me is that's too good of a life for that for what he did in my opinion okay well well you know what let's go to the chat room and then jb can think about it denzel snipes the biggest george since foreman what i resemble that statement uh you, all right okay i know where that george is and the other one jb looks like he's mad <laughs> and a peppers at subway lol all right and let's let's, see, let's keep the comma going here Hey, no karma has no timeline. We all know that. that. All right, JB, you've had a chance to listen to what Candy said. What are your thoughts about Larry Nasser? No relation to Gerald Fogel, who got his tail kicked a couple of years ago. She's 100% right. What he did was absolutely disgusting. You know, it's a shame that, you know, there's people like that in the world and things like that happen. And the fact that they breathe the same air that we do, they walk the same streets that we do, you know, until they get caught, it's pretty disgusting, you know, and it's horrible. You know, I feel horrible for every gymnast that was affected or every young person that was affected, because who knows if it was only gymnast. You know, if someone's doing that 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 amount of times, I'm sure he went out of, outside of that as well. And it's just a shame that their lives are affected forever. You know, it's it's sad, and you know, living life in prison. You know, I don't think he's gonna. First of all, in prison, from what I hear, they don't like things like that. Obviously, he just got stabbed multiple times. You know, I'm not rooting for him to get hurt or anything like that because that that's not good either. But it's a shame people like that can can be out there amongst us. It's it's a mental a mental illness that people have. You know. The, we need to do more to to figure out what causes that so it doesn't happen again. Because every time it happens, it affects that person, their family, their children. It goes on generation after generation. That's the problem. So we have to try and stop it now before it happens to our children and our children's children. Okay. All right. Well, you know what, JB? I was paying attention to your Twitter activity earlier this morning in order to put this one in the thing. And is Aaron Judge overpaid? Well, you know what? I watch your Twitter activity. I get up early in the morning so I can get my stuff out of the way before I head over to where I have to go. And before, while I go refer to that, I do want to get this out while I can. Just so you know, the Sports Exchange is being broadcast around the world. The audio version of the show can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast. Please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube. 
South Florida Tribune. We're striving for a thousand subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? No problem. Send your topics to South Florida Tribune at gmail.com or feel free to comment in the chat room. If you want to advertise cost efficiently, give me a call 954 304 4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, t- LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website's www.southfloridatribune.com, Twitter at Tribune South. Candy Ebling is not behind the scenes today. She's front and center, but she normally is. Okay. Coming up later this summer, the Motor City Madmouth will be debuting on the Eagle Corp Media Studios in Boca Raton. The Eagle Corp is a technology-based company, the media studios for which I am the president of broadcasting, and my co-host is the owner of the company, Dr. Edwin Hernandez. So we'll keep you posted there. And also, I want to announce here that I am in the process of writing a book, Adjusting to New Media. When I told Dr. Hernandez about my idea, he liked it, two days, and we agreed to do it. And then he wanted it to be the textbook. I said, no, I'm writing it my way, but I'll make a deal with you. He said, what's the deal? I'll write a textbook. Deal. Okay. And I'll sponsor you and I'll do everything. So now I'm on the hook for two bucks. How about that? And that's without the caffeine. Hook for two bucks. Don't forget that. All right. With that said, yeah, as you can tell, I'm hyped to have everybody back, my full regular group here. All right. Well, we're going to start with. It's been so long since I've seen JB. I thought that was the guy from Subway. Yeah. <laughs> wow. oh, that was bad. Wow. Uh, I that. Chad Tatima. Wow. Hey, everyone. Hey, Jeff. All right. On Aaron Judge, is he overpaid, George Icorn? Well, anybody that's injured and is making a lot of money like that is overpaid in my eyes. But what are you going to do? Um, no, heck no. He led the league in home runs. He obviously set a record. Um, he makes as much as he deserves. I mean, that's the going rate, especially for a guy that's a power hitter like him. So, no, I don't think he's overpaid at all. Um, And like I said, it's unfortunate. You know, sure, the Yankees are forking out money, but teams do that all the time when big stars are injured. Mike Trout, Aaron Judge. But, no, no, I don't think he's overpaid, Scott. What about you, Jacob? He hit a big – he hit his big toe. He hit his big toe and he's out for a bit. I broke my big toe going for a black belt test once. (laughs) It is not – fun and it also affects the hitting so as much as anything like that but when he is completely healthy when he's completely healthy he's a monster so no he is not overpaid this is the thing maybe he's not otani and he pitches or anything like that but still you know what i mean it's like he he'll be right back to what he's doing he's not gonna have the 62 obviously but he'll be right back probably august september and he'll just be hitting them at will all right, Jeremy, you're in charge of the chat room. Start reading. Lions 1960. Karma is undefeated. He will get what he deserves sooner than later. Sooner the better, I hope. Uh, Tim Levine says, hey. 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 Hey, hey uh, man. Another great Lions fan. Hey, Mon. Also one of my moderators. Uh, he is your team captain. If not him, who should be paid more? Stanton? No. Garrett Cole. Okay. Well, I wish I had control the mute button. Denzel, thanks. Right, my well, question you know is, what? who else on the squad are you going to pay more? All right, JB, this is your topic via Twitter. What do you think? Is he overpaid? So I'm going to say what I said last night about the toe. He's a giant. Look at him. He's huge. And what, what do people always do when they fight giants? They step on their toes to try and injure them. You always see that in the movies, the cartoons. The guy steps on the giant's toe and he's you know hopping around. That's why he hurt his toe. The dude's, the dude's a giant, but he's by far one of the most electric players in baseball. People come to the stadium to see him play. That's why he got the money. Same thing with Otani. Why he's going to get the money? People show up just to see him. That's why these guys get the money. Who and as Denzel said, who else are you going to pay? I can care less that Garrett Cole's pitching. Who's that? He's garbage. Stanton, another guy that can't stay healthy, but you know, at least he, at least he's a decent player. But you know, people go and they buy the jersey, they go there to see see Judge play, larger than life. Jeremy, you can't overpay somebody that just hit sixty two home runs in a season. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, he got hurt. People get hurt. Accidents happen. It, Breaking a big toe, you know, that affects so much because especially if it's was it his left big toe or his right? Okay. Does Candy? anybody know? No, no. 
Great has to be, it has to be because his, it has to be his hitting toe because of what he does. He step up and then he uh, tries. If if he is out, it means he can't hit because he can't right. lift his foot. Because either way, you kick forward and plant that foot, the left foot, when you kick and kick and mm-hmm. move your hips into the swing. If it's the right foot, you push off with it. Yeah. Either way, you're talking about an immense amount of pen, pain with the broken toe. Yeah. Well, what about I you, Candy? Is he overpaid? Is he overpaid? No. I mean, yes. I think all sports people are overpaid. All <laughs> actors, all. I mean, the amount of money is just crazy. Jacob. But it is what, what the going rate is. It's I what wish. It's going. I mean, if you look at, like, let's compare them. LeBron James, $44.5 million. You look at Lionel Messi, who's... In inner Miami, sixty-five million. You look at Phil Mickelson, Mickelson, one hundred and four million. Steph Curry, forty-eight point four. All these people are way, they're up there. They're, Lamar Jackson, forty-five point six. They're the people that are drawing people into the stands to watch. So those are the people that should get paid. Well, I say he's not overpaid because the Yankees didn't pay him the money. The San Francisco Giants are ready to, so we'll leave it at that. Okay, well, you know what? We got an article from Jacob Christner on 624-2023 that appeared, South Florida Tribune, end of extreme weather. Okay, since you wrote it, you talk about it, and you lead us where you want to go, Mr. Christner. Well, where I brought this up was the fact that we have the, – what we have right now is just the way that the, the – excuse me, I'm sorry. The NFL is going to go. What in the world? <laughs> no, no, but it's like where we're going to go. I brought this up because all of the, the all of these. Uh, remember, right by itself, we just saw this. DeAndre Hopkins is going to go to Tennessee. Remember, he also had. They also Tennessee also has no sales tax. A lot of these people are going to Miami. A lot of these places. I mean, places like Chicago are going to get themselves a um, get themselves a dome stadium, or a, you know, just a just get a roof on a stadium. And if they do stay in Soldier Field, it's going to get a roof. Everybody has to do something like this because of the, um, anything from the free agents to coaches to anybody. The idea of the idea of the, the extreme weather, Bears weather, or any of that kind of stuff is all because of fans. And most of them are drinking vodka in the stands to keep warm. So it's, the, oh, I said three-degree weather in the middle of, you know, and all that kind of stuff. Meanwhile, it's only benefiting one team. The other is frozen because they're down and they're depressed. No one wants to be able to do it anymore. And it's like the last big player to be able to come to the Bears was Khalil Mack, and he ended up going the minute he could go. Maybe he could get out of there. They're not going to get another big one again, and if they, they're definitely not going to get themselves um, another Justin Fields if it doesn't work. So that, they, they have to go get something big. They have to go get themselves a stadium. They have to get the flash. They have to get the style. And that's everybody now. I think the Chicago's next. I think Green Bay will be one day. I think eventually Kansas City. I think them all. And it's like, I think that's, I'm just talking 10 years down the road. And I think colleges and everything. Because we have NIL. We have NIL and we have all of this. People are going to want the flash. They're going to want the style. They're not going to want, this isn't an era where people have, have suffered anymore. They had all had air conditioning. They all were uh, sheltered in their way. So they're going to want to continue to be sheltered, and that is the way that is. Okay, JB. It's pretty sad. I mean, to me, that's one of the greatest advantages of football is whatever the weather is in your location. When you, you know, we're, we're the South Florida Tribune show, you know, the sports exchange. When you go to Miami in September, October, and it's the fourth quarter after you've been playing four, you know, 45 minutes in that humidity – and that heat, you know how hard it is for the opposing team as opposed to the home team who's been living in that condition for the last whatever amount of sure. time? You know, when you go to Green Bay in December and hopefully in the playoffs, maybe not this year, but in the future, you know how hard it is to play in that cold weather where, where these guys are living there all year? So it, it's a shame to see that these teams are going away from it. I get every one-off you want to have a dome stadium because it's a multi-use thing like in Minnesota you know, where they're using it for other things besides just the Vikings. I still don't like it. I, I like the natural elements. It makes the game so much better. The only the only time I kind of like it is in baseball 
or what they do in Milwaukee and Texas where they'll open the dome if the weather's nice. Right. Candy explained it great on a show previously where, you know, people travel long, long distances to go see these baseball games. And unfortunately, you can't play baseball in the rain. Football, you can. So they're traveling for no reason and they can't make the makeup game. It's a waste of money and time. So I can, I can deal with that for baseball if you open it where the weather's nice. But for football, there's no reason for it. Play in the elements. That's what the game's about. Well, Jeremy, you anybody could watch a team in the elements, even though they have a dome stadium. It's you and George Eichhorn. So what are your thoughts about Jacob stopping? Well, in all actuality, the only team that probably will never do it is the Green Bay Packers. And the reason why is they turn their field into a heated field. That You're noticing a lot less injuries and a lot less winning in January in Lambeau since they did that five years ago. Okay. True. I'll say this, Jeremy, just saying this real fast. They might be around. I'm not talking about the, the elements and what, the, you know, because there's not a lot less elements and people can be able to get. What I'm talking about is it's not for, necessarily for the fans, nor even the winning. It's you're, we're getting to the point where we're getting five, 10 years down the road and getting the biggest names. Mm-hmm. I understand. Getting, uh, get, getting the biggest names, getting everything. It's like it's a business and a show now more than anything else. It's what a lot of fans treat it as such. Drives me nuts, but it is the way it is. All right. Well, the one that talked about Green Bay is on the show, Candy. Why don't you? I know JB gave you a little bit of a shout out there, complimenting you. So why don't you give me your take on this? So we all know that I now live in South Florida, but for the most majority of my life, I lived up in Wisconsin, where Wisconsin. it gets brutally cold. Packers country. Yes, of course. Lambeau Field. There, I can't tell you the first time I went to Lambeau Field and it was playoffs and it was bitter cold and it had just snowed, so it was still wet and cold. But that was the football experience. You see, mm-hmm. I mean, that's one of the things that I love about football is that it's out normally in the natural conditions you play in the rain you play in the snow you play no matter what unless it's lightning out but otherwise you're playing in it yes is it a is it an advantage of course it is if you're from there and it should be that's what home field advantage is now if you make them all dome stadiums yes i mean let's face it like seattle the 13th man i mean they have a home field advantage everybody does do I think that should go away? No, because I think as a society, we're becoming too coddled and too, I can't, oh, I'm going to get too cold. That, so don't go to the game. Let the people that want to go to the game, go to the game if it's cold. That's how football should be played. All right, before I say, <laughs> before I say anything, I'm going to defer to George Icorn. We both experienced some cold weather games at Tiger Stadium in Detroit until the Lions went indoors to the Silverdome. So, George, you take the lead, and I'll follow up to close it out. Yeah, and uh, I started going to Tiger Stadium for football back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s. So I can speak from experience, and there was nothing better. I agree with Candy. Out in those elements, watching the Detroit Lions – you know, and they shared the stadium with the Tigers, so it wasn't actually a football stadium. Of course, we know that, but they did the best they could, the grounds crew, to convert it to football. And the elements were there. Oh, my God. So we bundled up more. We still snuck our flask in to get some get some whiskey or whatever I you want. Up. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> so it was a fun thing. It was, yes, it was miserable sometimes with rain and snow. I'll never forget that Thanksgiving Day game when Minnesota kicked the butts of the Lions. They shut them out. The purple people eaters was a humiliating Thanksgiving Day loss. But all that being said, I know where you're going with this, Jacob. These kids today, they want it all. They want it. The athletes want to go to where it's comfortable. And like you, I understand what you're saying, where it's comfortable for them in the future. I do worry about that. But as far as the fans' perspective, and of course, Detroit, I mean, I'm talking a long time ago. We all know that because they went to the Silverdome and played indoors before Ford Field was built. So these Lions are not accustomed at all to playing outdoors unless we get a former Lion, I mean, a former Packer or former Patriot or somebody that's been used to outdoors, but a Buffalo. Um, but yeah, I know more and more stadiums are going to be domed, but I don't like it. 
All right, before I say anything, we have a Kansas City Chief in the chat room. Wow. What's up, Coach? Harmon, my man, Scott. What's up, crew? Yeah, that's my boy. Hey, Tori, what's going on? He's as a coach. Saw that incredible picture with you and Patrick Mahomes. Sorry to dampen your parade, Jacob, but why is the Buffalo Bills building an outdoor stadium? Because they think it's going to be the end of extreme weather when they benefit by it. Uh, well, New England Patriots remember. have gone out there. Hold on, let me finish. Okay. Okay. You yeah. had your turn, I had mine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So why are they building a stadium so that it is cold? So there you go. So I oh. don't know. The Buffalo Bills are the big, and they'll never put a dome over a Lambeau Stadium, Lambeau Field. You know, I, I don't, like George, I was meant to be brought up in, Outdoor, and that's the way it is. But you know what? We got to roll on this Harmon thing. My God, we got an NFL guy in this. And all right, let's roll with the chat room. Okay, George Icorn, you can go ahead and talk about it. I got to fire him up there. Lions, 1960. Yeah. <laughs> At least I think it should be like most of the games in the seven days. Yeah. Keep it, 75 yeah. on with Pontiac Silverdome. Yep. Hey, what's yeah. up, Patty? How are you? All right. How you doing, Next sir? Back to Mr. Chief. What's up, Miss Y'all? Well, we miss you, too, Tori. Don't worry. You keep in touch, and we may have you live from Kansas City one of these times. And we'll, we'll even bring on the Wednesday night show. I'll even extend it to seven. I don't care to bring you on. All right, KC, here we come. All right, Lions 1960. You got Tori Harmon's team to look forward to. So in closing that thought, Pat, I do believe. Pat, can I say something else? Yeah. So. I just wanted to be put this out there. The Packers have sold out every game since 1960. Mm -hmm. They have 115,000 people on the waiting list yeah, to get season, season tickets. tickets. Average time is a wait of 30 years. Oh. That's for an outdoor stadium that it gets mm -hmm. bitter cold sitting there. In a watching. small town. In a you small even... town, yes. And, well, and I want to bring the thing. I want to bring the thing to it. I'm a Bears fan. Like I said, I you talk about bitter cold. You talk about three below. You talk about all those tons of those games you've seen. The winds they call it Bears Michigan. weather for a reason. I've enjoyed it in my life. I'd still, if I was wrong, I'd be happy, you know, to be able to get to that thing. But I'm talking, I'm not talking about what I like, George like, right. any of that like. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking the, I'm not talking about what we like and what we prefer. I'm talking about where the business has been going so darn fast and life comes at us. And I'm bringing this, and it's like, and all I can think about is that's why I want, I actually do want Fields to succeed because it's going to be hard to get anybody else if it doesn't. Because just because it's like a couple of things, Illinois has a terrible tax and it's also cold. And it's and until they get that new stadium. And those are the things. I, mean, I love outdoor cold stadiums. I like the – even though the Bears are like 500 in Bears weather, it's like I love it myself, but I'm just being – just what's honest to the next five, ten years. Let me tell you, Jacob, you don't have to defend what you wrote. You just got a yeah. lot of people that just feel a little different than you. That's okay, all. Okay, that's, that's cool. I mean, you know? that's all. And let me tell you this. I used to enjoy going to Soldier Field to cover the Lions because I stood on the field there with hiking boots and four pairs of socks underneath, so I know mm -hmm. what it was like. And the best part about the whole game is I didn't have to buy concessions. I sat up in the press box, and they gave us box lunches when we were up there, and they waited on us hand and foot because the press box was too small to have buffets. So take it from an insider that's writing a book on this yeah. stuff here. So I hey, don't me wrong. I mean, cold well, weather stadiums you know, serve a also, purpose. Pardon me? There's also one other thing that none of us have mentioned, What's which that? is one main reason why these domes are popular. We're talking NCAA football championship. We're talking the Super mm -hmm. Bowl. We're talking the mm -hmm. Final well, Four, guys. Sure. And we're talking yep. about WrestleMania and concerts yep. for country singers, okay? There's yep. money to be made in the domes. Well, That's JBL sort of Ellis mentioned reason. that earlier, George, and I. all you're doing is reinforcing Ellis' thought. So okay. I'm with you. Unless they're multi-purpose for Final Fours, I get it. I yeah. remember the New Orleans Superdome, the first time they ever held a game inside of a dome. I was at it in 1982 when Michael Jordan won the national championship in front of 60,000 plus. So, yeah, if you got a Final Four, it's another story. But for the most part, what I'm saying is these – Outdoor stadiums, they're going to build them. They're less money, number one. And you can't go ahead and take away the human element of what 
you have in an NFL game. That's all. I mean, either side can argue, and I can see the Bears building one because they're looking to build something anyhow. So, and they're building it from scratch, and they're willing to pay that money. But I don't see many other teams going to the indoor format since a lot of these stadiums are already built. So, and, and I'll be honest with you with the whole outdoor football thing. I went to Lambeau Field uh, last December. It, it was an experience to go there. I wouldn't want to go to a game there in December regularly. I I got a Christmas gift Bears Giants tickets for January 2nd at Soldier Field. First time I ever went there. I looked at it and I said, it's the new year. It's going to be freezing in January. Great thought. I appreciate you, that you thought of me. But it's so cold. I don't want to go. <laughs> I mean, I went. But, you know, it's one of those things. I don't want to sit out in the cold and watch a game. It is what it is, but for the players of the team, you know, it's just old school. It's the new way of looking at stuff. I'm not. A, I'm not a fan of the. You know, well, let's have a dome and, and call it a day. All right. There's two topics I definitely want to get to. One of which will be Inter Miami. Okay, but first we'll start off with this. According to NBA news and videos, Gilbert Arenas cooks the modern NBA player for having no work ethic and no being not being in shape. Let me comment on this before I turn it over to you, and I'll get mine out of my way. Gilbert Arenas is making this comment. Once upon a time, this was a man in an arena that hoisted a gun. So if anybody's going to go out there, and, and I'm going to tell you, I agree with both of his thoughts that a lot of these guys here are without question, okay, have no work ethic, and they're not in shape. I'll give Gilbert that much but i don't think he's as good a source as one would think because of his track record holding a gun and his career obviously was tainted because of his gun activity around the arena for gilbert arenas is there a pun intended maybe a little bit all right i'll go around with george eichhorn yeah i'm not looking at him to provide advice uh but you know he's got an axe to grind possibly i'm not sure I don't believe the fact that, well, these guys are out of shape. They shouldn't be. They got year-round training facilities. All these teams have performance centers with these new arenas, like the Pistons built their brand-new uh, indoor uh, arena and, and, uh, and team headquarters, and a lot of cities have done the same for the NBA. Um, I, I, you know, I just don't buy it, though, that, he, that universally. We have already talked about injuries. Yes, we feel that they milk too many injuries. Talked about that on many of your shows, but I don't agree with that. You know, they're doing it deliberately. There's too many guys out of shape. I just don't buy that. Sorry, Gilbert. Well, let alone the fact that he's hardly a role model. All right. I'll take it over to our new Mr. Opinion, Jacob Christer. I'm sure he's got thoughts on this. I need to get my glasses and just sit up real close. <laughs> no. All right. I'm not going to listen to this guy. Not at all, because, for instance, we talked about Draymond, what he did to Jordan Poole. At least he did it straight did it eye to eye. This wasn't a gun. Didn't need to have the gun in there, period, end of story. I don't care. If it was a sucker punch. Be, here's the thing I give Draymond when through threw that sucker punch. He saved Jordan's life, because Jordan Poole's life, because he also caught him before he went down the wall and hit his head. He knew that, and it was there. So I give it that part. That's more, that's more even though it was a sucker punch, it was pretty reprehensible. It's not any more reprehensible than a gun. Two guys going on trying to be the biggest swing in you know what contest with a gun inside of a locker room. So I'm not going to care. But here's the thing also, I will say it with this, with the training and everything like that. Whether it's wrestling, whether it's boxing, baseball, basketball, everything like that, you used to train differently. Everybody had a different training style. They had a different body style. They had a different everything. You had everything from a Mickey Mantle who looked like a Greek god to the Yogi Berra, you know, <laughs> who was a squat little fat guy. You know, they used to have something like that. Now, these are training centers in every sport, everywhere, every which way. And everybody looks the same, plays the same, is the same, got the same. <laughs> got, you know, got to be the same, excuse me. That's what you have. And it's like, so he was saying that they, he was saying that they've gotten a bit lazy. It's because the training got lazy. It's all the same. It's like when it is the same, you don't. It's hard. Like, for instance, you get a rarity. Like, and I will say this LeBron James um, pay, uh, pays a million bucks a year to keep in shape. A million dollars a year with the way he does with his body. That's the rarity. 
Maybe a couple others do it, but everybody else is with these systems and these programs and these training centers. It's all the same. So it looks lazy because it looks the same. Everybody looks the same. They play the same. They move the same. So when it was different is when everybody looked different, played a little different. You had a different style and you had roles. So that's what the whole thing is. This. So I will give it that way. But as far as Gilbert Arenas, I ain't, I ain't going to give him anything. It's like he's right in a certain way, but that's where it is. It's because everything is the same now. Yeah, well, Gilbert Arenas is a guy I hardly use, utilize as a role model. I can't stand a guy in for him to make in these comments. I struggle with it, but I didn't have a problem bringing it on here because I think he's there. there's examples of certain things and there's examples of not certain things. And Gilbert Arenas is an example of not certain things. J.B. Ellis, what do you think of Gilbert Arenas? Is he a credible source? Gilbert who? Oh, yeah. Exactly. But, no, Great. seriously. There's... A thing going on with these second-rate players, like uh, by second-rate, I mean not the true Jordans, Ewings, um, Birds, like the top stars of the previous generations. The second-rate guys, the guys who were good but not great, they're all all of a sudden coming after this new crop of NBA talent because the game is different. The game has changed. You know what? Get over yourself. You had your time. Stop saying that these guys are weak, lazy, they're not as good as you, they couldn't compete with you. They're competing with each other. They're playing against the guys that are their age. If, you, if you're if you so good, Gilbert, put on the shorts, lace up your sneakers, and get back on the court. Or <laughs> get over yourself. Gilbert who? Next. Okay, Jeremy, that's you. All right. Let's see. Is he right? Partially. Is he right for saying it? No, because he has no business talking about the NBA after what he pulled. And pretty soon, John Morant's probably going to be the same way. Okay. Candy? Yeah. Gilbert who? Huh? What? Gilbert Come Godfrey? On. Gilbert Grape? Grape. I said yeah. Grape. <laughs> All I have to say is, if you're not in that position right now playing it, you have no right to be able to say what they're doing. You don't know what they're what they're doing, how they're training, how you know, and what they can we, what they can do and what they can't do. Like JB said, go ahead, put shorts on, and you go ahead and compete with them and see how you would fare at that level. Is would I say that everybody is in better shape or worse shape now? I think it's a matter of opinion and I think it depends because I do think there is more flopping. I think there's more acting going on. Um, I think some of the little injuries are people don't play through injuries. I don't think like they used to. So is that good or bad? I think that's more of awareness that, you know, they shouldn't probably have played through some of the injuries that people played through way back when. Are they tough as because they're not playing through it? That's what you're looking. That's what you're comparing it to. If they, if now all of a sudden Aaron Judge hurts his toe and you think, oh, he should still be playing, well, you don't know. So stop judging this generation from what you think you know when you don't know. Okay. And, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Anyway. No. 25, 26 years ago, I didn't even play high school basketball. And I decided I wanted another thing I wanted to try is I tried out for a, I tried out for a junior college basketball team, a community college, just four, just because I could shoot a little bit. I could shoot a little bit during the time. Tried out for the thing. I mean, it took me five minutes to be sucking complete wind and missing every shot after the fact of be showing that I didn't belong. And that was 25, 26 years ago. It's training. Training's even different now. I use that as a thing because training is different now even. It's what a point I'm bringing yeah. up, and they don't, people don't understand. It's like every time we get these judgments, it's like you, you talk about Gilbert Reeves. He did play then, but he's not here now. And someone like me who will say, I will try it and fail miserably, I'll at least try, go out there and go see what you do. And I'm with you on that, George. I'm with you guys and everything like that and candy. Put on the shorts and go try it, even at your age. It's like, it's like give it a shot because you might be shocked. Okay, 
on the inner Miami. We talked about it, pun is pun it. We're going to do it again here. What I'm going to do is mention a few things. Candy's going to give the stats. I'm going to let her go ahead and steer the ship on this <laughs> topic. Okay. Here's the thing. Inner Miami's Lionel Messi is signed, sealed, and delivered. The team has signed a few of his buddies, and it's the worst team in the MLS. We know he'll sell tickets, but will he deliver wins? 22 games. The team is 5-14-3 with 18 points and last out of 29 teams. Candy, let's talk about the money. And then, as far as I'm concerned, the only thing I can say with Inter-Miami, good luck. Gilbert, Gilbert Arenas is an idiot, and Lionel Messi is not a miracle worker. Candy, take over on the money, and you can direct the crew from this one. Okay. Is he going to bring money into the game? You betcha. They unveiled him Sunday night. It rained at the stadium. There was 500 media that were credentialed for this unveiling. They had a concert. They had 20,000 fans in the stands just to unveil him and see him. Not play a game. Is he going to bring money into the game? Oh, you bet he is. Now, will they? Will that translate into success? Maybe not immediately because he hasn't played and gelled with all of the players yet. But will he? Yes. I think they will be successful because if they bring in that kind of money, they'll be able to bring in the talent and the players to go with it. Okay, well, so well, let's I'm go fine. around. Let's go right beneath me. Mr. Jeremy. Well, hi, Miss Candy. Wayne you? Weinstein, Messi mania is all oh, over oh, Miami oh. interleague soccer. He's right. Yeah. But the thing is, what's going to happen? They're actually going to start scoring goals, minimum of one a game, because that's what Lionel Messi does. He scores goals. Goal! So will, so will they win games because of it? <laughs> Possibly. But definitely not just that. It's it's a money win for this year and for their future. And he's and Wayne Weinstein, he's been the talk of MLS since the All Star break. Okay, we'll just see if Lionel Messi gets him to Pioneer Park in Miami. Continue on, Candy. I was gonna say, JB, you're up. You're muted, you're JB. It may not translate it to wins this year. But in the future, that's something to build around. He's one of the greatest players in the sport. But it's definitely going to make money. Everyone's excited. Ticket sales, as you said, are through the roof. Everybody's watching it. There were pictures of him out grocery shopping. Why he didn't have security with him, I don't know. It is Florida. We hear all those crazy news stories from Florida. Maybe we should send them to him so he get security. But this is, listen, the MLS got a great name. Hopefully it continues to build the sport. You know, I think they're one of the best leagues as far as the way they're run um, and all the professional leagues in the U.S. It doesn't translate into viewership just yet because, unfortunately, soccer isn't there in this country. Hopefully in the future it does, but I definitely think that they're heading in the right direction. Jacob. Is Ted Lasso coaching? Maybe Coach Beard? You know, it's like if they want to win the next rest of the game – here is the thing. Very first game, here's my prediction. They're going to have a tie, and he'll probably have the assist. He'll probably have a shot on goal, and they'll go wide or something, you know, or the post or whatever, and people are going to be excited. He'll get the assist off the goal, and there'll be people will be excited, and there's the tie. They'll get a few wins. They'll get a few wins. They're not going to go 22-0-0. You know, it's not going to happen like that, but it's like – the biggest thing about this by itself is you're going to see more. You're going to see more big football stadiums start bringing him in. 80,000 people, just like the old Pelé. And we had those type of deals. And that's the biggest thing for MLS soccer. It's because it's going to bring more people. If it is great soccer, it's going to bring bigger ones. You know what I mean? It's going to bring Mbappe in eventually one day and those types in. It's going to bring more of the international flavor in. So the, it, right now, if you went 22 on one and I could said it's not going to, that's wonderful. This is for next year. George. Yeah, you saw a little bit of my thunder, Jacob. Uh, Pele, this has been done before, guys. New York Cosmos did it. The Detroit Express, playing at the Pontiac Silverdome, brought in Trevor Francis, one of the top 
goal scorers in England, and that worked. They drew fans. Hey, I'm all in favor of this. I mean, you're right. It might not help them right now and translate to wins right now. They have a sad sack team, okay? Only five wins this year. But this will really help them as they go forward. Okay, Wayne says if they had just brought in Messi, it may not have resulted in wins, but they brought in bouquets. Elba, a few younger kids, and they are discussing a few other options. So this should result in wins, but with 12 league games remaining, this may not result in the playoffs this year. And I think Wayne hit that on the head looking at the remaining games of the season um, and what the moves that they made. And they'll definitely win a few more games than they would have had they gone straight. But I don't think that, you know, they're not looking at this year. You know, having Messi just continue and finish the couple of games this year isn't what they want. They want it for next year so they can make a run at the title. Oh, yeah. And that's why they brought in everybody, you know, so they have a chance to gel. Soccer is one of the toughest games to because you have to be on the, the same, uh, same level as your team. Everyone's got to be in sync. So bringing those four in now – They'll win a couple of games this year out of the, the 12 that are left. But next year, they're going to flip-flop from the bottom to the top of the Eastern Division. Okay. All right. Well, I've said all I'm going to say on it. So I'm going to go back to football, but a different kind of football. And this is something that we've talked about on Inside the Pigskin. We're going to go ahead and use this topic. This may call it a night, too, and I'll carry over one other topic for next week. But the Edmonton Elks have tied the longest home – Losing streak at 20 in all of the four big men's North American sports. I know Jeremy's laughing as hard as he can. How is this possible? The Edmonton Elks, once the Edmonton Eskimos, once led by Warren Moon. How is it possible, Jeremy? I didn't know you were going to have this as a topic because I was going to throw it at Jacob. I said, at least you're not the Edmonton Elks. You win half your games at home. They've won the. They've lost the last 20 consecutively therefore they don't know how to defend the home turf they evidently don't have a team that knows how to play together they evidently has a coach who can't find his butt with both hands on the map well yeah and i'll say this part they i think they i think it's karma for calling themselves the Edmonton and else instead of the eskimos I mean, Eskimos, we're talking Warren Moon once played exactly. here. Exactly. Campbell like, once coached here. They won Grey Cups. My oh, goodness, no. the Grey Cup, my <laughs> other country. Yes, JB. Oh, yeah. Listen, I, I am available to be hired as a head coach. You know, I could do that in my spare time. I mean, obviously, I could win a game at home every, you know, one every 20. So I'd be, you know, a huge winning percentage in front of the coach they have now. Matter of fact, I guaranteed five out of 20 right now. But that's say, I, you got to win one out of five. You got to win one out of yeah. five. That's, that's what he just said. He said. That's what he just said. You know, yep. <laughs> five, five out of 20 easy, but it's just sad. It happens. Teams go through ups and downs, you know, roster cycle through GMs get fired. They bring in new people and get new blood. It, it, it's part of sports. You see it with almost every team. Okay. Jacob, the, the oh. Edmonton Elks. You ever heard of it? I'm going to dig up the grave of Jack Patera and put him in at the Edmonton Elks and, um, <laughs> get, and get him. I remember when he went to Seattle up and they were so horrible. It's like, I'm going to get him to coach the team. Maybe even the dead corpse can do better than this. <laughs> this is pathetic. It, really, though, it really bites up when you're losing that many. It's, it's an organizational issue. You're looking at an organizational issue. You're looking at everything. You're, you got to ask, where's the owner? You got to ask: Is the owner trying to, to go Rachel Phelps from from Major League and try to get him to another place? Whatever doesn't like Edmonton is this happening? It's like you have to ask because they. It means when you have twenty in a row, it means you don't have anybody. They're not playing well. Anything? <laughs> if, like, yeah, the back of a milk carton, probably so. But if you have to ask that. You have to ask when it's twenty in a row. Are you doing that? Or are you doing this on purpose? Because it, that's that's a couple of different years. Yeah, that's a couple yeah. Of different seasons. That's two and a half seasons of home games. Yeah, that, that's, a that's horrible. Of, it that, it, it's horrible. That means you're that means you're trying to lose at this point. I mean, you got to remember, you got to remember Detroit 
they, they were they went for that. Remember, they were the 0 and 16 and 08. Remember, they came a point away from beating the uh, from beating um the, the Indy and um Peyton Manning in the last week. In the last week, they came a point away. Even they they gave Dan Orlovsky. Yeah, but I'm just saying. Even they gave it a point. They gave it a shot. This is the thing. When you're that bad and you're giving it that part, where did it mean? You knew that Detroit was terrible, but what was the organization? And I remember what they got from it. This is two and a half seasons like this. Now we got to ask. We got to ask if this is on purpose. Well, Dan Orlovsky running out of the end zone is obviously everybody likes to kick him around at his current employer is what they do. And I know Jeremy's wagging his finger. What, Jeremy? And the, the funniest part of last season was Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo did that versus Seattle. Dan Orlovsky posted on Twitter, freedom! <laughs> no, not even not even freedom because uh, D, uh, because Garoppolo knew it immediately and just got rid of it. I mean, Orlovsky, like, he basically, Orlovsky basically took about five minutes out of there and still was running. Uh, all right. I, well, in fairness to J.B. Ellis and Jacob Christner, J, J.B., let everybody know how to get a hold of you. J.B. underscore the program on Twitter. Um, Sideline Sports on NFL Media Alumni Network every Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Um, Cub Financial coming up in about five minutes on Sideline Sports. And, you know, Cooperstown this week. And if you're there, come say hello. Love Cooperstown. Been there a few times. And the credit card takes a beating. All right, go ahead, Jacob. Well, um, I am on um, I am Jacob Pundit on Twitter. Jacob Pundit one on the TikTok. Sunday nights, Basket Bros, Monday nights. For the last two, the last two weeks, it's going to be Pundit Views. And then, uh, and then uh, Jay and I are going to be, I mean, Denzel and I are going to be doing a new wrestling show. And then Very the Pundit Views will that. be from Patreon. That they'll be on Patreon whenever I can be able to nail somebody down. So that, I mean, Wednesday nights is three, uh, Pundits, Pundit, this, and, um, and Confidential, which is coming up next. Thursday night's going to be working on getting um, Yin and Yang back. And then I am part of a, a movie which has a, a proof of concept that I will show everybody. Uh, so I, am, I actually did act, and I can show you all. All right, well, Jacob, we, I'll see you on Sunday on Basket Bros. J.B. Ellis returns here to the Wednesday Night Sports Exchange next Wednesday night. Glad you were back, J.B. Ellis, and looking Thank forward you, to guys. having you on until you take another break, which hopefully is a little while from now because I know exactly how well you were missed. It's pretty obvious. And All right, Jeremy, he wagging his finger. He wants I got to one. I, no, I got one for you. Breaking news. The Jets are trading Denzel Mims to the Detroit Lions. Okay. Wow. I'm going to leave on that note. You guys have a great night. All right. Have, have a good so where show. do we trade Denzel Snipes to? All right. <laughs> well, have a good show, Jacob. Good night, guys. Um, all right. Good night. That, that wrestling show. <laughs> all right. And we'll let George Icorn make his final analysis once again on. Well, uh, yeah, it, it is uncalled for. All the right things that you guys mentioned. It starts at the top. Is this an absentee owner? Is this a crazy general manager? Is this an uh, ineffectual Obviously, coaching staff, there's a lot of questions that I would have to ask myself. And, of course, the players got to look themselves in the mirror, too. Anytime you lose 20 games in a row, especially at home, is disgusting. And uh, we alluded to it earlier. We've suffered a lot in Detroit with some bad Lions teams, but they never did something as bad as that, losing 20 in a row at home, Ford Field, Silverdome, Tiger Stadium, wherever they played. But as it been 10 Jeez, that's horrible. That's horrible. That's a that's that's terrible. And like you said, Scott, they've had a once proud franchise in the CFL for so many years. I used to love watching the CFL back in the day, but not not with teams like that. I don't want to watch it. Well, well I think that goes without says is they've tied the largest home losing streak twenty in all of the Big Four men's North American sports. Yeah. One thing to lose a lot of games on the road is another to lose a lot of them at home. Candy, is there anything you want to add to this? I do. Back in November of 2021, the board of directors of the Edmonton Elks Football Club terminated the contracts of president and CEO Chris Presson, general manager and vice president of football operations Brock Sunderland, and head coach Jamie Alonzo, effective immediately. 
So they've gone through some change, and obviously it hasn't helped them yet. But it hasn't fallen like they haven't made they haven't not taken some actions. They've started to take some actions. Obviously, 2022 season was not better. And so and this they year, need to make either. some more changes. Yeah. Yeah, I like this comment here by James Burgess. Go ahead and read it, Jeremy. Records like that require a change of everything at the top, and the league can mandate that type of thing. You're absolutely right, James. Yeah, he's right. And yeah. he also has one just before. Just an FYI, all I'm going to be making a full length video called Tim Duncan Suck that will be full of lies. <laughs> that is funny. You know, for the folks that are out there that are watching us on YouTube, they need to see this. This guy, James Burgess. It, it, Wayne, Wayne, I like him. Wayne Weinstein stuff. says they need Dan Campbell. <laughs> Uh, no related, no relation to Hugh Campbell, but Dan Campbell's already taking care. Well, I take a guy that sucked on my team, man. How many rings does he have, Duncan? Come on. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. he did not suck playing basketball. Come on, James. Well, he was making a joke. Hand it, you got to hand it to this guy for his swagger and his. Uh, I, I I like his swagger. This guy's all right. I have no issue with him. Denzel anybody, the wide receiver is a lion. Wow. A, anybody that goes out there and contributes in this chat room deserves something called the First Amendment. You get to say whatever you want. Just try to refrain from politics. I'm not looking to get shot on the air or somebody can track me down in this wild age or whatever. But, you know, uh, James Burgess does have a good comeback. Oh, gosh, this one's really funny. All right, Duncan Jewelry Collection is up there with the Queen or King. <laughs> Not sure how to read that one, Jeremy. Do you? What's that? Here. Oh, Dun Duncan's Jewelry Collection is up there with the King or Qu King Queen or King. It's because he has so many rings it can rival the crown jewels. Ooh, all wow. right. See, okay. I needed a translator here. No, I'm not Otani, but he was my translator on this one. So, all right. Well, with that said, we're glad that JB Ellis and Jacob Christopher could join. I know they're on confidential now, but we still have the four of us. So, with that said, Jeremy, let everybody know how they can get a hold of you. Well, you know, you can always find me right here on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel, where Scott uses me two, three, four, sometimes six days a week. <laughs> then, then you can also find me on my channel on YouTube, which is Kneecap Biting with the Detroit Lions. And you can also find me on the SouthFloridaTribune.com under the Motor City Tribune heading, where you'll find me under a list of great authors like Scott Morganroth and George Acorn, that guy. <laughs> and you get to read your man Burgess' latest comment. Jeremy gets James speak, but y'all, you'll get to know me too. <laughs> All right. As long as you subscribe to this, power. hey James, as long as you subscribe to this channel, we'll definitely make sure that you we get to know you because Jeremy's handling all the people from his platform that'll range all the appearances on the show. So James, please subscribe to the channel, and Jeremy will be contacting you. All right. With that said, well, Icorn, you get to go next. Oh yeah, plug in that old book of mine. Oh yeah, I write too, Jeremy. Jeremy and I write for the same guy, Scott Morgan Roth. He's in that but book. I also, <laughs> I also, I also put Scott in my book because he interviewed not one but two all-time greats, Jimmy Connors and Muhammad Ali. And there's pictures of our friend Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Ray Lane, not to mention Jim Brandstetter, Dan Miller, Van Patrick, the whole gang. Uh, you, there's a link to uh, purchase my book at the end of my column under the Motor City Tribune. And also, you can reach me at gicorn at yahoo.com or on LinkedIn under my name and also on Twitter at, at SNG Sports 99. Uh, you can find me on 108 Stitches, Inside the Pigskin, Scott, uh, wherever he needs me, uh, sort of like Jeremy. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, George, you're prominently through the first two chapters already mentioned in my book, and you're going to be in it an awful lot. Let the me pressure's on. The oh, pressure's oh, no. on. I'm telling you, you're honest for sure. No, no, I mean for me to put a good forward together. Oh, no, you better, man. Forward. I'll tell you, I got some interesting editors inside the Egglevator who are doing my editing for me. Yeah, if, in just in case you haven't heard, you're just joining us. I do my new book will be adjusting to new media. It'll be published by Dr. Edwin Hernandez, who owns Eagle Corp, a 
technology based company and let me go and I'll go over everything as I have it written here. Candy, give you a break from it this time. But just so you know, the sports exchange is being broadcast around the world. The audio version of the show can be heard on iHeartRadio, Apple, Spotify, Google, wherever you get your podcast, please hit the red subscribe button on YouTube, South Florida Tribune. We're striving for a thousand subscribers. Please also comment, like, and share the broadcast. Want to be a guest? Send Feel free to participate in the chat room. I see some candidates in here already. Send topic ideas, South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. You want to advertise cost efficiently? Give me a call. 954-304-4941. We broadcast live on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Our website, www.southflorida.tribune.com. Our Twitter is at Tribune South. Normally, Candy Ebling is behind the scenes, but tonight she's in, in the house. Coming later this summer, the Motor City Mad Mouse Show will be debuting on the Eagle Court Media Studios in Boca Raton, Florida, owned by Dr. Edwin Hernandez, who will, by the way, be my co-host on that show. We'll keep you posted. And once again, he's behind my book as well. What a great show tonight. Any closing thoughts since there aren't any parting shots? Jeremy? Um, I do like the fact that Brad Holmes addressed the wide receiver help by trading to get Denzel Mims for a conditional sixth rounder in the next year's draft and a seventh rounder from 2025. That's a brilliant move to get a guy that's six foot three, 207 pounds, and a four three eight forty. Very good. I like that, George. Any closing thoughts? No, uh, just the fact that uh, the NFL has begun, at least in Detroit. The rookies reported. And next it'll be the veterans coming into camp in Allen Park. And I heard that the demand for tickets today, Jeremy, was just through the roof. Oh, these I are can... the fans. These are the fans that, yeah, had to try to get tickets for the for, for the practice sessions. Right. Go ahead. I logged in on DetroitLions.com at uh-huh. 11 a.m. and had 6,958 people in front of me waiting. Oh, my God. And wow. when I finally get through at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, all the tickets were gone. Yeah. Lions mania, alive and well. Well, Candy Ebling, any closing thoughts? Welcome back. Who knows? I might just have you on next week. She'll be filling in when I have to do more stuff over with Dr. Hernandez. But, Candy, any closing thoughts? Well, I would love to say that any of you should go out and watch Chicks and Salsa or Three Chicks in a Pod. We had a great interview last night with Mindy, and you have to see it. You have to get on the bandwagon. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about the whole Washington football scandal, Dan Snyder, all of that. Show me the report. Uh, go out and watch Three Chicks and a Pod and Chicks and Salsa because that's the other place where you'll find me. You find me on on Scott shows when, whenever he needs either a female voice or another voice. But otherwise, go go watch. All right. Well, I'll mention James Burgess one more time. See y'all next time, everyone. Lion's hype is both unhinged and unjustified, I believe. Well, you know what, James, we appreciate your contribution to the program tonight. So, but that said, this concludes this edition of the Sports Exchange. On behalf of J.B. Ellis, Jacob Christner, George Eichhorn, Jeremy Balreich, Candy Epling, and myself, Scott Morganroth, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you the next time. Peace.